Hey everybody, this is Michael. We're doing something a little different this time. We're playing some Yu-Gi-Oh! Because I was thinking about doing a Let's Play for um, one of those Yu-Gi-Oh! Like RPG games. But I figured a lot of people might not know how to play Yu-Gi-Oh! And it's not a whole lot of fun if you don't know what's going on. Also, I've got a friend of mine who we're trying to get into playing more. Because me and uh, my friend Alex here have been playing this a lot. And uh, we want to get some of our other friends into it, but they don't know how to play. So we're doing this. Uh, just sort of tutorial on how to play the game. I've got a few decks here, but I'm just going to use my basic one, Fighting Spirit deck. And I'll sort of explain it when we get into it. Alex, I'm ready when you are. Alright. And I have myself muted right now because I'm going to be sort of discussing strategy as we go. The game starts out with just uh, rock, paper, scissors. Determine who goes first. Basically, you always want to go first. The difference here is, if you choose to go first, you can't attack on your first turn. But if you choose to go second, you can attack on your first turn. But normally it's still better to go first because of the momentum you sort of get from going first and you can set up traps. But there's pros and cons to each. So first thing here is that I have a timer, which is something to watch out for, is the life points. I've got 8,000. He's got 8,000. That's what you start with. When your life points are gone, you're dead. So the point is to get rid of the other person's life points. There's a few other ways you can win the game, but that is the basic one. It anything else will probably never come up unless you're fighting me because I do some weird stuff sometimes but not with this deck this is my more basic deck um so with this the brown cards are monster cards that you put on the field in this front row here and attack to do damage and these sort of greenish cards are spell cards I can put down to do various different things I'm running out of time so I'm going to put down this card real quick and end my turn well I've got a little bit of time to explain it it has, some cards have an effect. This one has an effect. All warrior type monsters you control gain 200 attack. So each card has an attack and a defense. It has an attack of 1200. It has a defense of 1900. Basically that determines who's going to win when it fights. And despite it being called attack and defense, if I attack his card and it's in attack mode, it compares my attack to his attack. It does not compare my attack to his defense. It always uses whatever number the receiving person is uh, in. So if, I, if he was in defense mode, it would be my attack versus his defense. Defense mode is just when the card is sideways. And the benefit to me in defense mode is even if I have more attack than his defense, I will kill the card, but he won't take damage from it to his life points. Where normally, if he's in attack mode, I'm in attack mode, I attack him and he has less attack points, he'll take damage. Like if it, his, well actually, here's a good example in reverse. He's got 3,000, he's probably about to attack me. I've got 1,600, he's going to do 1,400 points of damage to my life points see here it goes what I was trying what I was gonna explain though is this guy's special thing this girl is that all warrior type monsters you control gain 400 attack it itself is also a warrior monster that's why it went from 1200 to 1600 it's a nice little card because most of my cards in this deck are warrior you kind of want to have sort of synergies like that here's an interesting little thing it's a nice thing I can show off here I can put down this card and you can only summon one monster a turn, so it's important. See, I, if I click on this, I can't summon these. But you can use as many spell cards as you want. So I'm going to use the spell card Creature Swap. Each player chooses one monster they control and switches control of those monsters with each other. You might notice he only has one monster he can choose. So I put down Creature Swap. I choose this monster. And he's got to choose the blue eyes. So now suddenly, his card that was better than mine is now mine, which is perfect. Also, I can activate this card, which I can, it's an equip card. So basically, any monster I equip with it gets 300 attack for each monster he has. So if I equip this, he suddenly has 300 more because of that. So now I go into battle mode, I click attack, I click on his card, and I do a good deal of damage, and suddenly I'm winning again. Well, not again, we were even before. I like to think of myself as always winning, though, even when it's a tied situation. Um... Uh, he's doing a lot of stuff on his side that I'm just ignoring for now. When Once we uh, sort of get more into the specifics and stuff, I'll explain what he's doing. But the important bit is that you understand what you're doing. You don't need to understand what your opponent's doing if, you're, if you don't know what you're doing. I think that's sort of the way to think about it. So now I've got these two different monster cards I could put down. This one's stronger, but they've got different effects. So like this one, I can tribute that card, which just means to send it to the graveyard, which is where all your cards go when they die, unless something weird happens. So I can tribute it, to then destroy one card on his side of the field. One monster of his. He doesn't have any monsters right now, so that doesn't matter. I'm still going to put that down, though. And you might be wondering, well, isn't this card stronger? It has 1,700 attack, which you can also see when you hover over it. 1,700 and 900 defense. Shouldn't I put this down? 
Yes and no. Yes, I would be able to do more damage to him, which is pretty valuable. In fact, since he has no monsters down, I am going to do that. Uh, so, that was kind of... <laughs> that was sort of pointless. But, yes, I am going to do that. But I was thinking maybe I wouldn't, because this card is a special thing, where when you summon it, if you have another copy of this card in your hand or in your graveyard, you can put down another one. And you see, normally you can only summon one monster, but in that way you could put down two. And that's pretty darn useful, getting out more monsters, because if I had been able to get down two, say I had another one of those in my hand right now, I would have killed him, because just because of that other attack. Now, yeah, Alex, I'm going to demonstrate something real quick, so even though I could kill you right now, just bear with me. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. Just, yeah, give me a sec. So, he's, yeah, right now, I could kill him. I could go into battle mode and destroy him. He's got nothing to do unless he has a trap card. And considering he hasn't surrendered, he very, mel he very well might. But we'll figure that out. You can see this card is pretty weak, but what it has is when it's XYZ summoned into another card, it, that XYZ summon card gets a thousand attack. Well, what's an XYZ summon? Well, this is a good chance to show it off. When you have two cards that can be combined into an XYZ summon, you'll see this on your sort of side deck, or extra deck, I think it's called, which means I can special summon. And then you get this list of cards. You sort of determine this when you're building your deck, what cards you put in here. But if you look at it, say I, I'm looking at this, number 39 Utopia. If you look at the description, it requires two level 4 monsters to be able to summon this. And if you look, level 4, that's what the stars are, and level 4. And you also, when you hover over, it has a star and then four. So, level four. This is a level eight card. So, I can combine them into this card, which you'll notice has a much higher attack, 2,500. It also has a nice little ability where if something tries to kill it, I can detach one of its materials to negate the effect. Effect. These two cards that I'm combining are the materials. So, that means I can do that twice. So, I can combine these, put it down in attack mode, and now I've got a stronger card, which is made even stronger because of that card I used to combine it. Gains a thousand attack. You can see it has a thousand more attack. It's, it's, it can seem a little complicated, and when you first start out, you don't even need to worry about it. Um, I'm expecting a trap card here. Nope, I beat him. Okay. <laughs> We're gonna get into a, a rematch here. And when you lose, you get to choose if you go first or second, so I'm assuming he chose to go first. He did. Yep. Uh, but, like I was saying, the XYZ cards, they can seem sort of complicated, but you can really ignore them for a large part at the beginning. The first deck I ever built in this game um, turned out really well, and I had no XYZ cards. Which, if I was probably playing, like, professionally, you know, like doing the meta sort of thing, I'd probably lose. But against Alex, it does really well. I'm not using that card, that deck right now, because it's actually still somewhat complicated. We might show it off in a little bit. But for now, this is my most simple, other than the fact that it uses XYZ. But it's nice to be able to explain that, because most people do use XYZ cards. I think he might even have some there. You can see he has three cards in his extra deck. Um, maybe we should explain what he's doing. He, uh... Actually, I'm not sure what he's doing, so I'll explain <laughs> later as he does stuff. So, I've got some choices here. It's funny that I haven't drawn any trap cards, which are actually important to show off. Basically, they're purple cards. They're just like spell cards. You can use as many as you want. But you have to put it down first. You put it face down on the field so that they can't see where it is. Like, this might be a trap card. I don't know. It could also be a spell card. And then when they do something, you can trigger the trap card to stop it or do damage to them or destroy their monsters. It's, it's a trap, so it basically just messes with them. He's got nothing out, which means I can put out a card and attack him, which makes me think that's probably a trap or he just had no way of summoning something. But I'm going to put out my card with, my, with the most attack out of all these. Just so, in case it's not a trap, I can do the most damage. And let's see. It's waiting, which means he has a possibility to do something. He's No, it actually means we lost connection. Anyway, we're back into it, and uh, we're going to hope that doesn't happen again. It shouldn't, but it could. So, the, here it is. Here I've got a trap card. This is a trap card. It's a continuous trap card, which means once I use it, it stays on the field and keeps doing stuff. I can put this down now, and you see it doesn't do anything. Because it's a trap card. It needs to be activated by something he does. Usually, sometimes something I do. It's a, it's always Traps are always reactions to things that happen. So, when I use this trap card, all monsters that are special summoned are char changed to face-up attack position and must attack if they are able. The turn they are summoned. 
which basically just makes him have to attack me. And since I have some cards that can make my guy stronger while he's attacking me, it's it's sort of a, it's a trap. You know, that's the point. I'm going to send out my Wind-Up Soldier because it's actually a pretty good card. You can see it's only level 4, so I can summon it just normally. But during your main phase, you can increase this card's level by 1 and attack by 400. So I can activate it, and suddenly it's got 2200 attack, which is quite a bit. Especially for, like, the first turn. So I can do that much damage just right away. These creature swaps we can't use yet. The Fighting Spirit I could have used, actually, but it wouldn't have done anything because he has no monsters on his turn on his field. So it, it this only increases by 300 for each monster. He doesn't have any monsters. We just lost connection again. Okay, we're back in. Um, yeah, the game can cut like that sometimes. I might actually cut the part so you might not know what I'm talking about. Basically, the game, uh, it uh, lost connection. But that's one of our faults. It, it's either his internet or mine. I think it might be his, but could just as easily be mine. It's hard to tell. Mine seems to be working fine, though, so I'm going to blame him. And so let's get to explaining sort of what he just did is he used this spell card that lets him discard a card, so he gets a card from his hand, puts it in his graveyard, and then he gets to get two dragon-type monsters into his hand, which is why he was able to summon this card, because to summon this card, he has to reveal a blue eyes in his hand, which is what he did. Basically, reveal is just when he shows it to me, and uh, that allows him to summon it. Now... Hmm... I need to decide what I, I'm going to summon, and I've got quite a few choices here. First, I'm going to put down Solidarity, which is risky, because basically right now I've got nothing in my graveyard, and this card, it, when you, if you have only one type of monster in your graveyard, which I, I will, because all my monsters are warriors, then all monsters that are the same type, so all of them that are also warriors, will get 800 attack. So, that means that so that means once I have a thing in the graveyard, it'll give all my monsters 800 attack. Right now it does nothing. But since I'm putting it, me putting it down is just sort of like simplifying things so that in case it comes up later. But he could have some sort of spell card that gets rid of my spell card, and then that could actually be a problem. For now what I'm going to do is do something a little sneaky. I'm going, well, watch. I'm going to put out this card, this uh, different dimension assailant. And then I'm going to attack his card that is way better than mine. Which means I'm going to take damage. But you might notice this thing's effect is it can banish, after um, this card is destroyed by a monster, it can banish the monster that destroyed it. So now his card is gone. Which, I still don't have anything on the field, but neither does he. Which is pretty nice. And there wasn't much else I could do to deal with a card that had 3,000 attack. That's about as much as I could do. So, clearing that out is good. He just revealed a blue eyes to me, which means he was able to summon another alternate blue eyes. That's sort of how his deck works, is he gets out these blue eyes all the time, and they're super high attack, so it's it's pretty... It's a pretty powerful deck. He's got a pretty good setup. And my deck can be a good counter to it most of the time, especially if I get something like this. This is what I'm looking for. And also these cards, like I just showed, where I could banish his cards. But it doesn't always work as well as you'd like. I'm going to put out this double ants because, see, the thing is here, this card allows, this is one of those cards that allows me to banish his card, and so is this one. And if I'm going to creature swap with him, I don't want to give him one of the cards that can just banish cards. I want to give him a card that doesn't do anything for him. So I'm going to use creature swap, which allows me to pick a card. I don't know if I've already said this. I lost a little bit of footage when the game uh, lost connection. But so I can choose that. He chooses his card because he has to. It's the only thing. And then we swap him. So now I have this which is way stronger, and I can attack him. Also, one thing to keep in mind is in this slot and this slot, just they're the same for each player, you can put down field spell cards, which he has one down, which increases the attack and defense of all dragon, winged beasts, and thunder-type monsters. So basically, he has down these mountains, which make his dragons more strong. It also makes the dragon I stole from him more strong, which is why he's at 3,200. Pretty nice. It's pretty nice for him, too, but it's nice that I can take advantage of it like this and do just that tiny bit more damage to him when I attack him. He just drew two dragons, though, so there's a good chance he's going to be putting another one down. If he's not, I don't think he's going to survive much longer just because of how much I have. But, no, he's able to reveal a card, and that means he'll be able to put down an alternative one. Yes. What he might do here is sacrifice. Actually, his card has a special effect where once per turn, you can target one monster your opponent controls and destroy it. Which means he won't be able to attack the same turn. He won't be able to attack this turn when it's activated, but he was able to get rid of my card, which actually sucks quite a bit. 
I've got nothing that can deal with him. The most I could get is if I put that, this down, I could get it up to 2,500 because of this card, which increased by 20, uh, by 800. Which, but that would still wouldn't be enough. So the most I can do is put down one of these two cards to banish it, or put down this. I think I'm going to put down this. This card, once you have it on the field, you can activate its effect to tribute it, which just puts it in the graveyard, to get rid of one of his cards. Again, not the best, because I still don't have anything. He can probably put something out next turn. It's pretty reactive to him. It's not the best strategy. It, a better strategy would be some sort of card where I can destroy his card and have a monster out. But eventually he'll run out of blue eyes, and hopefully he runs out before I die, which is uh, not very likely at this point. We're not this. There's some luck involved with card draw, and the better deck you have, the less luck is involved. And my deck isn't that great. It's okay. Uh, this card, when I summon it, I can when I use it, when I use the spell card, I can add one level four or lower warrior type monster to my deck. So. I am going to add what would be good against this guy. If I got 2200 there, I could get up to 3000, but that's still not enough. So again, probably the best thing is just an exiled force, this thing I used before, to just put it down, activate it, and get rid of his card. There's not much else I can do there, um, just because we're, we don't have a lot of options. And then he has a card that when one of my when one of his blue eyes is sent to the uh, graveyard, he can activate it, and it did damage to me, so. Here, Alex, let's go back to the hosting thing, because I want to, um, use one of my other decks. Okay. Okay, yeah, so now I'm going to use one of my little Should more... Should I use a different deck? If you want to, sure. Okay. So, yeah, now I'm going to use one of my little bit more complicated decks, just to sort of demonstrate some of the different things you can do. Um, also because I just don't want to be repeating myself the whole time about, you know, the strategy I'm using with that deck. Uh, unfortunately, this will give away a bit of my strategy to my friend who's going to be watching this, but that's fine. I'm going to use my Exodia Magician deck, which is basically built around the idea... Exodia is a card... Well, it's, it's five cards, actually. Exodia is this monster that's in five pieces, and if you have those five cards in your hand, you automatically win the game. It's pretty unlikely to draw those five cards. Technically, it's possible to draw, draw them all in the first turn. You can see here I drew uh, none of them, so <laughs> it's pretty unlikely. But this deck is sort of built around drawing more cards, you know, different cards that can draw more. Like, you can see this card is a spell card where you select one card from your deck and remove it face down. You move, remove from play is this card here, is this spot. We'll get into that a lot with this deck, because it's sort of based around it. But... And then during your second standby phase, which is basically just two turns after, you can destroy this spell card and add the removed card to your hand. So which means if I put this down, I could choose a piece of Exodia, and two turns from now, I would get it. There's some risk to that, but it's pretty nice. Now you can see I've got some other cards here, some new monsters and stuff. They've got different pros and cons. This one, when it flips, which is mean if I put it face down in defense mode, and then the next turn I flip it over, I get to draw a card, which is nice. On an Exodia deck, you want to be drawing cards. With this one, if it when it dies, I can uh, get a spellcaster type monster into my hand. Exodia happens to be a spell type, spellcaster type monster. So is Dark Magician, which is a really good card. So that's pretty nice. I can't summon Dark Magician because it's level seven, which means it would I would have to tribute two things to put it down. So I'm gonna put down a Jester. I'm gonna put it down in set mode. Why I'm doing that is because I want him basically to kill that Jester, and then I can basically get out another jester and put it down. It'll put put some into my hand. Thinking about it, I probably should have put down a train since I've already got enough dark magicians for what I want to do. Um, and he's he's using his warrior deck now, which is sort of similar to the one I was using before. He's got all warriors, sort of like my last deck, but it is a bit different. See, now that this card died, I can use its effect. Do you want to use its effect? Yes. Which allows me to choose a card from my deck to put in my hand. I can choose a piece of Exodia. These are the pieces. It's the two legs, the two arms, and there's also the head, but you can't, with some, for some reason with this one, you can't choose the head ever. It's some, like, special <coughs> card. I can choose, and you know what? I've already got two Dark Magicians. I'm going to choose the leg. So now I've got one piece of Exodia. If I get four more, I win the game. Now, that's unlikely to happen, and I've only actually had it happen twice, which is why this deck is sort of built to be pretty good, even if that doesn't happen. Now, it's been a long time since I've faced this Warrior deck, so I don't know how well this actually how 
well it does against it. We'll see. Now this card, you target one of your banished dark monsters. I don't have a banished dark monster. We'll get back to that, actually. Just keep in mind that I have this. I'm going to set down as a trap. It should come up later. I sure hope it does. And I'm going to use this card, which lets me choose a card, and I'll get it in two turns, like I said before. And probably what I want is I can choose any card. Any card in my deck. So this is every card in my deck I'm looking through. And I'm sort of thinking, if I want to... Yeah, I think the smartest thing to do would be to grab a Magician Navigation. We'll get to what that does once it comes, but just keep in mind, it's in my banished pile right now. In two turns, it'll go into my hand, so I can use it. All right now, he's got this card out, uh, the A-Forces, which in increases the attack of all his warrior monsters. Ooh, and you see that? He's got a spell, which allows him to target one spell trap card on the field and destroy it, which is what he just did to that. So now, my uh, Magician Navigation is just stuck in the banished pile. I can never get it now. Which is why it's sometimes very risky to use this card to get a piece of Exodia, because then he can banish Exodia, and suddenly you can't get Exodia at all. So... Also, did I do that next last turn without putting down any monsters? That was just dumb of me. I need to pay more attention. Okay, so now I've got this card, Dark Ma Magical Circle. It does a lot of things, but the main thing it does, for now, is when I activate it, I put it down, I get to look at my next three cards. And if one of them is a Dark Magician, or something that has Dark Magician in its description, which... Dark Magician, then I can reveal it to him, just tell him, hey look, I've got a Dark Magician, and then add it to my hand. So now I've got three Dark Magicians, which is nice. Then I get to choose the order of my next two cards. Which one do I want to get first? Mere Force is a trap that can kill all of his cards, which is particularly useful right now, since he's got a good number of cards out. Dark Magician of Chaos is a really good card, but it's an 8 level monster. I can't use it without tributing two cards. I don't have any cards out, so that's impossible. So clearly, I want to do that. I'm going to put... Then I'm going to put down my train, just because it's the only thing I can put down. I should have put that one down last turn, but I was dumb. And I'm putting in defense mode because I can't kill either of his things, and I want this to be able to flip so I can draw a card. If any of this sounds uh, confusing, um, it gets a lot simpler as you go, and the game... The basics of the game are very basic. But you want to sort of use those basics and the different effects of cards to get a sort of synergy going. Like the fact that I was able to use this card to get another Magician. And the Magician, if I had gotten the Magician Navigation, can do a lot of other things. It all sorts... The whole deck wants... You want it to be all working together. Okay, so I use that to get my next card, which I already know is a Mirror Force. He's going to attack me with that. Um, for some reason, this is in defense mode. I don't know if he's doing that because I... Well, actually, I know why he's doing that. And it's smart. It's because he knows what my deck is. This Mirror Force, when you use it, it destroys all monsters the opponent has if they're in attack position. He's thinking that this card might be a Mirror Force, so he's making sure he has at least one card in defense position so it can't be destroyed by it. It's really smart. Fortunately, he's being a little too cautious because this isn't a Mirror Force, but now I do have a Mirror Force, and I'm assuming he'll probably just still keep that there, and I'll be able to wipe out at least two of his cards. And I'm going to put down another train, because I can't put down any of these. I could put down a piece of Exodia, because it's a level 1 monster. I don't want to do that, though, because I need to have it in my hand to be able to actually use Exodia. So now I'm going to let it be his turn. You can see he's got his cards are pretty standard. This one has no effect. This one also has no effect. This one, when it's destroyed, lets him summon another warrior card. Pretty basic stuff, but it all sort of works together, because he's got this bonus um, upping the attack of all of them. And you see, he's, he switched them, but he does have one card in defense mode now. And which was very smart of him, because now I'm going to Mirror Force him. Which he obviously saw coming. But it's it still does deal a fairly big blow. Because one, he's not doing any damage to me this turn, which is good, because I'm losing. But also, well, you got to put down another card, though, because this thing died. But also, he lost a lot of his cards. Now, you can see this Dark Magical Circle. A problem here is, since I only have five slots for spells and five slots, slots for monsters... I can fill this up and then not be able to use any spells or traps. But this dark circle will allow me to look at my next few cards and maybe get something nice, so I'm going to use it anyway. It's just a risk reward. Like this, you see. I can reveal a dark magician card. Since this has dark magician in its description, I can put it into my hand. Which I might as well. So that that's sort of nice. And then these are coming up next, it doesn't matter the order. It's nice to know that though. Now I know it's coming up next and that actually helps me out quite a bit with planning things. And I'll explain that once it, once the cards come up. 
Right now, there's nothing else I could put down. Both my Dark Magician and Dark Magician of Chaos require two things to summon it. If I try and click on it, can't do anything. So, I could put down a Exodia, but like I said, that's just dumb. So, I'm ending my turn. And we're not in the best position, honestly, because he can kill this card, and then he'll be able to do a damage. He shouldn't be able to do enough to kill me. See, he got rid of that card because he's afraid it was another Mirror Force or something. It wasn't, but it is a good card. And I'm a, uh, it sucks that he got rid of it. Also, he is actually about to kill me right here. I get a card, but there's nothing I can do. He's going to attack me with both of those, and I'm dead. Well, you got me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, let's do a rematch. Okay. Yeah, five minutes. Oh, we'll make it quick then. He's got he's got to go pretty soon, so let's just I'll just get as much information as I can get into this at the end of this. This is actually a good thing to to demonstrate. First of all, I got two pieces of Exodia. Great start as if I'm going for Exodia. Also, I can get this down this Magician Navigation, which is a trap, and I'm gonna put down this Jester, and we'll see what Magician Navigation does. I'll look at it while he's doing his turn. Basically, this this is a trap card, so when he does something, I can use this trap card. It's basically when he summons, like when he attacks with a monster. There are certain things that activate tracks, traps. I'm not even entirely sure what they are. But once he does one of those things, I'll be able to special summon a Dark Magician from my hand. I have a Dark Magician, so I'd be able to use that. Uh, this is actually a funny thing. He's using the spell card to get rid of my Magician Navigation. That uh, Using a spell card is one of the things that can activate a trap. So I'm going to activate my trap before he destroys it. It's not really going to work out for you, Alex. So now I can summon the Dark Magician, and this card has it to where once you summon a Dark Magician, you can summon another Spellcaster card from your from your deck. I'm going to do a Jester, because I like having those out, because when they die, I can get even more Magicians. So now, suddenly, just because of that one Trap card, I got two more cards out, including a very powerful card, this Dark Magician. It can also chain with other things. I have, um, rem if you remember that Dark Magical Circle... One of the other things it does is when you summon a Dark Magician, you can banish one of the cards on their field. So it, it, you can get everything tied together really well. He just killed my Jester. When a Jester dies, I can add another card to my hand. So I add my Dark Magician. I could have added a piece of Exodia, which might have been smart since I already have two pieces. But I do like being able... I like always having a Dark Magician on hand so that I can uh, use Magician Navigation if I have the chance. Now, I've got a pretty good feeling he has a Mirror Force or something there, but there's not much I can do about it. This Magician's Robe has an effect that I never use, but it has really high defense, so I'm going to put it down just for that. Because 2,000, if he attacks that, he's not going to be able to get through. And I'm going to attack with my Magician. I'm going to leave this in defense mode because I don't want it to die if he's got a Mirror Force, which I think he might. And he's got a Negate attack, which is different. But it's just the same, basically. It negates the attack and then ends my attack phase. So basically, if I had this in attack mode, I wouldn't have been able to attack with it anyway. He would have been able to kill it since it's in attack mode. He can still kill it now, but I won't take damage from it. Um, okay. So, one nice thing. We'll actually be able to show off a tribute, unless he does that. No, he won't be able to. So he has 800 attack. I have 2,000 defense. He takes 200 damage because he's not strong enough. He is going to kill that, though, so I won't be able to show this off. Or will it? Yeah, I won't. So I could get another Magician, but there's no point. I'm going to get an, an Arm of Exodia. Just so I'm a piece closer. I really didn't need another Magician. Especially since you need to, you know, to summon it, you'd either need the, that Trap card or one of those things. So I'm going to use Dark Magical Circle here. And this is actually something a little tricky I could do. Uh, none of these are Dark Magician cards, so I just get to choose the order of them. I want that Jester first, probably just like that. Now that I've got this Dark Magical Circle, there's something interesting I can do. When you, like I said before, if you summon a Dark Magician while you have Dark Magical Circle, you can get rid of one of his cards. So what I can do, hmm, this is a bit risky. What I can do, this is a bit nuts, but I, I like the idea of it. I can normal summon this card, sacrifice my Dark Magician and this card to summon another Dark Magician. But because of that, I can use the Dark Magical Circle and get rid of one of these cards. I'm strong enough to kill either of his warrior cards, but I'm afraid one of these is a trap that's going to kill my Dark Magician. So I'm just going to guess at which one is it is. And what do you know? That one would have actually gotten rid of my Dark Magician. It would have stopped my attack if I tried to attack. So I made the right choice. Unfortunately, he might have another trap. In fact, it looks like he does. But 
here's something that com comes up. Look at this. Do I want to chain another card? This is one of the reasons I love Magician Navigation. It has a special effect where you can banish this card from your graveyard. So you move it from the graveyard into the banish pile. And you can target one face-up spell or trap card and negate it. So I move Magician Navigation there and then stop his mirror force. Perfect. My trap just got rid of his. Now I can get rid of his monster, do some damage to him. That's the kind of little things that you want to have set up to where... I mean, I forgot about it, honestly, but that's that's the thing. The, this this deck works so well that you can forget about bits of it, and it, it still works in your favor. Uh, he just used this card to get rid of my Magical Circle. That's probably because he, he doesn't want me to get rid of that Trap card, which makes me think it's probably a... Another Mirror Force, maybe? You can have up to three of the same card in a deck for most cards. Exodia, you can only have one of any of them. See, it's another Mirror Force, of course. But most cards, you can have up to three in your deck. So I knew he had... If he's got one Mirror Force, there's no reason for him not to have three. So I knew there was a good chance of that. I just had to take that risk. An interesting thing here is, though, he's going to kill this Jester. I'm going to use its effect. And I could get... This is a, this is a choice. I can get another... I'm going to do it. I'm going to get another piece of Exodia. I've got now four pieces. At any point now, I have a 1 in 28 chance of drawing the last piece and just winning the game. Now, is that likely? No, it's not. <coughs> is it possible? Yes. Instead, I got a Dark Magician, which means I can do nothing this turn and I'll probably lose. Sometimes you gamble and sometimes it means you lose. That's, that's just the way of the game. In fact, he's going to be able to kill me, not this turn, but next turn. So all of his things are going to be able to attack me directly because I have no, no monsters out. If I was being smart, I might put a piece of Exodia out just to block him, but that would sacrifice my chance of getting Exodia next turn, which is basically what I'm banking on. He has to leave soon anyway, so this is good that it's you know, going to be a little shorter. And this card I can't use either, so he wins. Well, good job, Alex. Can you hear me? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I had four pieces of Exodia. <laughs> okay, but I think that's probably where we'll uh, stop it, because you got to go anyway, right? Yeah. Okay, well, I hope that was a pretty good uh, sort of demonstration of the game. You learn more and more about it while you're playing it, but I, I'm hoping that was a good enough just short uh, demonstration tutorial. And I will see you guys next time.